Good afternoon, all. Uh, just a quick preview of the COVID precautions. Um, all pews are available for seating. Masks are strongly encouraged for all non-vaccinated persons. Or if you'd feel more comfortable wearing a mask, please feel free to. We ask uh, that you try and maintain a three foot distance between families and you'll proceed to communion as directed by the hospitality ministers. And we would really appreciate it if you continue to use hand sanitizer, especially before communion. Thank you. So we welcome everyone, all our guests and all our parishioners to Corpus Christi community. Thank you for choosing to worship with us this evening. It is the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This great solemnity of the Assumption invites us to contemplate the light of the Lord, illuminating his mother, assumed into heaven, and interceding for us as his church. Our main celebrant at this Mass is Father Jacob, and our deacon assisting is Deacon Bob. So let us joyfully celebrate this Mass by singing together the hymn that appears on the overhead. Thank you. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We celebrate today the great solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who was conceived without sin and living her life without sin, 
was raised body and soul to the glory of heaven. And we who are not without sin, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these great mysteries, we acknowledge those sins and ask the Lord's pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you have done great things for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your mercy reaches to every generation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you remember your promise of mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who looking on the lowliness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, raised her to this grace, that your only begotten Son was born of her according to the flesh, and that she was crowned this day with surpassing glory, grant through her prayers that saved by the mystery of your redemption, we may merit to be exalted by you on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, 
to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have salvation and power come and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when that which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Where, O death, is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you, and blessed and the breast at which you nursed. He replied, Rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, I'm going to begin just briefly over here because we see, of course, we have several beautiful images of Our Lady here in the church, two of them of both of Our Lady of Guadalupe. <laughs> but we see here a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and around her a crown of stars, not just 12 in this image, but many. That same woman that we heard about in our first reading today, that woman, glorious in her victory, glorious in, in uh, her association with the Lord in coming from heaven, a great sign appeared in the sky, we hear in that first reading. And we hear this description of Our Lady, both as herself, Mary of Nazareth, but also as a symbol of the whole church, right, which brings to birth us destined to rule as, as disciples of Christ, not just for our own sake, we're not that great, but in Christ, united to Christ, destined to rule the whole world with an iron rod, praise God. Um, and here already we see Our Lady, the sign of our victory that is to come. And the image pointing to the great glory of God as well. And that is how Our Lady, that is always her role here, is to be both a sign pointing to Christ, always, and also the seal, the promise for us of where we will be. So today we celebrate the Feast of the Assumption, the, great fe the greatest feast of Our Lady that we celebrate, which might seem kind of weird. Why is that? Well, first of all, I just wanted to give you a little background. Sometimes people think, well, the Assumption, that's so recent, like 1950 or something. And that's maybe true that uh, Pope Pius XII dogmatically defined the Assumption of Our Lady as a truth of the faith. But, you know, popes don't just make things up. That's not why we have popes, <laughs> to just make things up. They guard the faith. And so what he was defining is that this has been a part of the faith for generations. And it, indeed it has been. We see the witness of some of the very earliest saints in like 200 AD or so-ish. We already have witnesses of some of the church fathers to Our Lady's Assumption. Our Lady's Assumption was strongly defended at some of the earliest church councils because the emperor came to Ephesus where Our Lady was supposed to have lived. And he said, well, where are her relics? Shouldn't there be her relics here? We venerate all the relics of the saints. Where are hers? And the bishops had to explain to him, well, there are no relics of Our Lady because she was assumed. It's in the records of the council. This has been a feast of the church, a great feast of the church in the East for 1,500 years now and here in the Latin West for at least 1,300 years, if not maybe a little bit longer. So not just since 1950. No, this has been one of our church's most ancient feasts in honor of Our Lady, our greatest feast in honor of Our Lady. Why? Well, because all, all the saints, almost all the saints, we celebrate their birth into heaven as the day of their great victory. So with the martyrs, that's usually the day they got killed. With other people, of course, it's the, the day that they died. Because that is the day of their glorification, the day they were truly born into eternal life. And so it's the same with Our Lady. We celebrate the Assumption as her greatest feast. 
because it is the day of her glorification, of her entry into the heavenly glory, her birthday in the fullest sense. And of her, doubly so, because she is in heaven not just in soul, awaiting the final resurrection to be reunited with her body. No, but she is there already, body and blood with her body, united to her soul. There already, as we will be, please God, in the second coming, when we will rise again, if we're dead. If he comes before then, then we won't die at all. But if we've died already, then we'll rise again and stand before our Lord in our bodies. And so here again, Our Lady is already the promise of how we will be. And she's that way in all of her mysteries. Our Lady who was immaculately conceived, which we celebrate on December 8th, was protected from the fall, from the original sin. A sign to us of God's goodness, a summary of all of God's people. God had promised over and over again he would keep his people faithful to him, that he would come to be with them if they would just say yes to him. And he raised up from his people, Israel, one lady who could truly, completely, with her whole self, say yes when he said, when he wanted to become flesh, when he asked her to be the mother of God, who could really, completely say yes because she wasn't divided against herself like we all so often are by sin, but who could give her whole self to receive all of God who in her obedience to God's will could open up within herself that space in which the word could become flesh and the one whom the whole universe could not contain could be contained in within her womb. And so Our Lady is the mother of God. Again, a sign to us of God's goodness that he has truly kept his promise. He has truly come to be with us, completely God and completely man. And so she is truly the mother of God. But also a sign for all of us. Because, of course, when we say yes to God, we who are baptized into Jesus Christ, we also bring Christ into the world. Because we have been baptized into him. We bear his body within us. Both because of our baptism, but also more, even more concretely because of our reception of the Eucharist. And so when we are obedient to God's will, when we allow ourselves to be transformed more and more day after day into that image of Jesus Christ, we too are mothers of God in a certain way, bringing to birth Christ Jesus in this world through our works, through our obedience to God. Our Lady bore Jesus Christ, our Lord, as a virgin, assigned to us of God's... uh, sovereignty of his soul action that God is at work in the world certainly through humans we see that in our lady's involvement he could have just poof appeared but he chose not to do that he took his humanity from our lady but our God works he comes at his sovereign pleasure and the virgin birth is assigned to us of that and we heard about the queen standing at the right hand of God We heard about Our Lady clothed with the sun. We heard that truly blessed is the one who hears the word of God and does it. And so Our Lady is blessed. She stands at his right hand in heaven, the right hand of the King, our Lord. She is clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet. She reigns in glory. And so the assumption is assigned to us about God, about his goodness, about his plans, that he keeps his promises, that if we are obedient to him, if we conform ourselves to him, then he who his life itself will complete his work in us. She who bore in herself the very life with a capital L, who gives life to all things who have life with a lowercase l, like us, was not allowed to suffer the corruption of death but was brought to heaven to reign in glory. That God completes his work. That God brings what he's started 
to its finish. That in his goodness, when we do not separate ourselves from him, he completes his promises. And of course, this is also a great promise for us. That we who, in all likelihood, unless our Lord returns first, please God, will suffer death in time, already there is a promise, there is a seal on what our God has promised us. That he will bring us to reign with him in our souls, but that in his good time also in our bodies. That we who are right now partially full of grace will in God's good time more and more here on earth And then, please, God, completed and brought to fullness, be full of grace as Our Lady lived her whole life. That when we are full of grace, we too, at the end of time, will be united with our bodies. That we too will stand before our Lord in the flesh and give him glory as Our Lady does today. So Our Lady is a sign to us of God's goodness, and she is the seal of on God's promises to us. That we too can be free from sin, as she always was. That we too can bring into the world the life of Christ, as she did completely, fully. That we too can be glorified and give glory to God, as she does now. That we too will stand before the Lord in our very bodies, as she does today interceding for us. So today is a great feast where we honor Our Lady, where we honor our God who has done such great things for her and for us through her. He saved us through her. But it is also a great feast for us because we celebrate the good things that God has in store if we will allow ourselves to be transformed more and more day after day. So we celebrate today. I hope you will celebrate today and tomorrow this great feast. We ask Our Lady's intercession today. We ask her prayers for us. We give glory to God for his great works. And we also ask one more thing, which we always ask of the saints, both that they would pray for us, and of course we look for their example, but also that because we are not separated from them, we are united to them, right, in the body of Christ, in in the Lord, and only in the Lord, that in a way she would give us her virtues, that she would give us her obedience to God, give us her purity of heart, her undivided yes to the Lord, that through Christ she would give the body of Christ, the church, these things, that still like her, we would be strengthened by her to say yes as well, to receive the Lord as well to be conformed to him and in obedience to him as well. So that in good time, we can stand at his right hand in glory as well. Thanks be to God. Profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came out from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. of our Lord's goodness. With confidence in that goodness, we offer our petitions to the Father. Our response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis, Bishop Johnson, and every generation in the church call Mary blessed and look to her as a model of humble, faith-filled obedience. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That nations unite to combat pornography and all forms of violence against women and families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That those awaiting the birth of a child have loved ones like Elizabeth to support them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that missing children be reunited with their families and loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the model of friendship we all seek be found in the love shared by Mary and Elizabeth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our sister parish relationship with the missionary sisters of the Divine Spirit in Columbia, May each heed the gentle stirrings of the Holy Spirit to support, to support each other in God's call to love our neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That those who have died will soon take their place at the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When we remember Gerald Champ, whose intention we honor at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you willed to give us our salvation and every grace through the obedience of your servant, Our Lady Mary. Hear these prayers and answer them through her intercession as we pray, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
to God, the Almighty Father. Amen, Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, which we celebrate on the assumption of the Holy Mother of God that it may lead us to your pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of your service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our, your most beloved Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
the right of Christian initiation for adults, RCIA, is for unbaptized adults, those who have been baptized in another faith tradition, as well as for adults who have been baptized Catholic and have not yet received the sacraments of Eucharist and confirmation. New sessions will begin Thursday, it'll be this coming Thursday, August the 19th, at the Parish Center. If you're interested in learning more about RCIA or know someone who does, please call the parish office. Is the parish mission on your calendar yet? Yeah, good, I'm glad to hear that because it's very important. We want you to join us on Friday, September the 10th, that'll be from 6 to 8.30 p.m., and Saturday, September the 11th, from 8 to 1.30 p.m. for our Catholic mission. You will never forget. The, uh, the speaker is John Leonetti, who the deacons just got to hear two weeks ago, and he's wonderful. He will inspire you. He'll, he'll give you good reasons to uh, expand your prayer life and your understanding of the faith. So really ex would love to see the place just packed because this will be worth it, guaranteed. Uh, there will be daycare provided, so we'll help you out with that part. And um, there will be a spaghetti dinner, so you get food too. Free food and, and a great speaker, world-renowned speaker, really. The, the dinner will be at 6 p.m. in the parish hall, and then there will be breakfast and lunch provided on Saturday. Three free meals. Huh? My daddy told me never skip up a free lunch, right? Um, there will be a car wash benefiting the sister parishes in Columbia. Uh, it will be next Saturday and Sunday. Volunteers will be outside to wash your car while you're in here receiving the Eucharist. And so uh, we'll just have you park on the north side. And on, on, you might even see me working on Friday night or on Saturday night. And um, we'll just have you park your car over there and you have to do nothing else. When you come back out, you have a nice shiny car. We will ask for, for a free will donation, however. Yeah. I was going to tell you not to go to any mud races first, but, <laughs> but you know, whatever. We'll get, it, you'll, we'll get your car clean. Thanks to all who came out last Saturday to help clean the, the grounds at Holy Family. It really helped a lot. Your service made a, a great difference and was very much appreciated. Uh, but the rain stopped us short. So we're going to finish the work at the adjacent lot on, uh, we'll call them that cleanup day number two. That'll be next Saturday, August the 21st, from 9 to 11. So, as I understand that right, you could get your car washed and help clean up the Holy Family. And uh, so come and join us for fellowship and for, for some fun. Also, there will be a prayer service for Father Michael McGivney during the Adoration of St. Joseph on Monday. So you're all invited to that too. That is Monday, this Monday, from 7 to 8 p.m. So another opportunity to show your worship of our Lord. I just want to very briefly reiterate, John Leonetti, September 10th and 11th, is a really wonderful speaker, um, engaging, exciting. So please mark your calendars, plan to attend. We pray today for our, our Lady's intercession. We celebrate God's goodness to her, and we are, celebrate his promise through her for ourselves as well if we remain in him. So I hope you'll celebrate. I personally will be having ice cream both tonight and tomorrow in honor <laughs> of Our Lady. So I hope maybe you can join me in that at, at your own homes. I mean, not, I'm not hosting, but <laughs> let us pray. Having partaken of this heavenly table, we beseech your mercy, Lord our God, that we who honor the assumption of the Mother of God may be freed from every threat of harm through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with 
May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God.